Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to this Honkast special presentation we got going on for you, of course. What is going to be a Hero Showcase is basically how we'll label it. And with that said, of course, the Han's newest hero joining the ranks, and who is Kane the Usurper, spelled U-S-U-R-P-E-R. -E if only I actually knew how to spell. We didn't know that before. <laughs> Uh, anyways, Kane the Usurper, of course, joining New Earth, and boy, oh boy, not only am I excited, but I know a lot of people looking forward to this newest hero, and and know especially somebody that's uh, really excited to see how he fares and how people react to him and whatnot is the one and only Waza, who's actually going to be joining me on this. Waza, how's it going, man? I'm doing good. I am today, like uh, every other hero release day, is a very special day for, for me. Yeah. And this uh, this hero especially, though. I mean, this hero, obviously, uh, a big part uh, in terms of you you had a big part in it. Actually, before we, before we get too much into that, though, we uh, as you can see on your screen, guys, we do actually have a, a replay loaded up. So l let me let me kind of just real quickly uh, talk about what what ultimately today is going to be about here, uh, as far as the special presentation. So basically, we're coming to you guys again. This hero just came out literally today. I know a lot of people, whether it's work, whether it's just not being able to actually get on the game yet, check it out for themselves, uh, or trying to play it, but then somebody else picks it up for them. Anyways, we're gonna do our best to kind of give you a really good breakdown. Uh, what we're looking at with Kane the Usurper, maybe some fun ways to play him. Uh, and also, to help do that, we actually got a replay of a uh, famous player. You probably know him uh, by the name Keizu. He's actually playing an alt account this game, but this is Keizu, actually. We grabbed uh, a couple of his replays, in fact, and we're at least going to go over the one, maybe two if we have time, and kind of, you know, talk about what he's doing, what we think, and especially you, Waza. Again, mm -hmm. this hero, after all, was a big hero for you as far yes, as uh, your involvement. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and actually start the replay here. I'm going to do, do a 3 2 one countdown that will hit play at the same time, okay? Sure. We got this? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Go. There we go. All right. I think we're good. Okay. So, uh, again, as, as I was talking about here, we got uh, Gold Addict, a.k.a. A Keizu, playing, uh, playing Kane. So, Kane the Usurper. Again, Waza, this is a big hero for you especially. Uh, so, what's the deal? Uh, what does Kane mean to you? So, <laughs> Kane was... Um, since I started as a designer, I first started as a balance Anyone designer, I moved into creative design, and now I'm kind of like, I, I kind of make whatever we need. Um, Kane is a, a long time running hero where I've tried to put in a half man, half lion, lion man type hero. It was kind of like the theme that I was going for, this heavy hitting, um, taunting uh, type counter carry. And uh, yeah, no, so Kane was uh, this long three year running hero design that I finally um, decided to work heavily on and get put in the game, and and now here we see him in the uh, way of Kane. Kane, aka the Lion Man, man. The Lion Man. How disappointed are you? You couldn't go with the Lion Man name. I'm, so I have I go by the Mega Man naming convention. All my <laughs> heroes, whenever they're in testing, are all Lion Man. You know, like right now I have um a a ninja who's an old man. He's like an old ninja, yeah. and I call him Old Man Ninja Man. <laughs> so. Simple. Right. You know, it's it's a simple like that, but no, obviously eventually Kane, developed into what is now Kane the Usurper here. And right. again, he really does have kind of a fun background. I don't know how much involvement you had in that necessarily, but uh, as far as the lore goes, obviously I, I highly suggest checking out the webcomic, guys. If you go to uh, heroesandnewer.com right now, the splash page that is up, you can actually find the comic there as well as the full breakdown of the hero and whatnot. Uh, but uh, I'm not usually a lore guy myself, to be honest, especially when it comes to games. I mean, I just like to simply play them, not caring too much about the story. But this this story kind of hooked me in a little bit. I, you know, he's he's involved someone with Malakin and Jerazai, you know, two very iconic heroes, obviously, in the game. So did you have any involvement in the lore, or was that something that kind of... So whenever, um, a d whenever we do a hero, there's always a designer who's the lead, uh, the main guy who kind of sets the direction, and he talks with the content guys to kind of figure out what they want it to look like and what they want the story to be. So in that regard, I did have a little bit involved with the the eventual lore. I, I wanted uh, Kane to be something that was uh, a good guy who's been kind of missed, uh, led, you know? And so the, the bad guys have kind of taken advantage of him. Malik has kind of taken advantage of him so that it's a kind of a, a good moral guy, but he's going, he, he's doing what he thinks is right, which could be potentially wrong, which is murdering Jerzy. Yeah. Um, so he's been he's been you know tainted by Malakin's corruption. 
That that he has been. So uh, now let's let's talk about actually the the skills itself. You know, okay, lore's fun and all, but I'm sure the majority of the people even really excited they kind of break down the hero as far as the skill goes, as far as how he's played. Now we talked about it in the spotlight. I know you've been a bad advocate. Overall, your idea of this hero, he's basically an anti-carry in a sense. You know, almost like unique in, in when it comes to that, but also with the ability to be a great team team support slash push hero at the right. same time. So is that a good way to describe it, you think? Yeah, absolutely. So um, whenever we decide uh, uh, decide on a design for a hero or a role, we want to make sure that they bring something unique to the game. And we always choose a major role and a minor role. Um, most heroes have a minor role of counter carry or, or anti carry. Um, and this time I wanted to try a hero whose primary role was counter carry, which is why a lot of the, the abilities turned out the way they did. Speaking of those abilities, oh, going to use his Whaley right there. We'll see if uh, maybe he's actually able to pick up a kill. Now, he doesn't have his ultimate, so I don't know if that's going to happen. By the way, first off, as you see here, of course, he is middle. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's uh, as far as the laning goes. Is that what you would expect to see, Kane, or is this just Casey, you know, being the player that he is? So middle makes sense. <laughs> so, so Kane is highly diverse. Um, the Q allows him to... Uh, get off a lot of heavy harassment in the middle lane, especially against uh, somebody like Moira who can't really get away from him. So he can always just throw out that Q, farm, push the lane with, with the Q. He can do the, he can do a lot with the Q, so you can solo him. Um, he generally takes up a farming role, but I would have him as your secondary farmer, never really the primary. Yeah. Um, and, but he also, because of his auras, makes for an excellent laner. Um, his strongest suit, I would say, is in the lane, um, in a side lane with another uh, lane partner. But by all means, if you can, if you know how to mid, if you're one of those all-around mid players, you can definitely throw down um, on this guy. Thanks, uh, thanks to his, you know, auras and being able to sustain himself in lane. Yeah, you look like they're gonna try to set up a kill right here. Whaley. Oh, woof, whiff, whatever, big whiff, <laughs> big whiff on the Whaley. I mean, that actually brings up a good point. You know, Whaley, it is a, it's a straight kind of targeting. Uh, ability, so you know, similar to like a hook or really any kind of skill shot in that sense. Yep. Uh, so you, you gotta, you know, you gotta make sure you're positioning. You know, I, I think Soulster is actually a good example, to kind of compare it to. You know, you gotta make sure that angle is correct, or else you're gonna whiff like. Uh, <laughs> so right a there. lot of people are gonna play this and go, "Man, this Q is devastating. This Q is too <laughs> much. It's too powerful. It's too strong." Um, oh, the reason why it, it hits so hard it, it, and it is so spammy is because a lot of uh, the facing abilities with it, you have to be pretty close, you have to be pointing just the right way, and anybody who is not an avid gauntlet player knows how hard it can be to kind of like face um, a good lined hook. Oh, yeah. So um, it does have its downsides, which you will see, but you know, if you're right on top of somebody, you're pretty much in. Great for that. Great farming tool as well, as I talked about in the spotlight. Also, you know, it, it does disrupt. It's also very worth noting. So, like I even pointed out in the spotlight again, you know, like a big ultimate going off or whatever. In terms of channeling, you can cancel that now. Okay, so you got the weather. You, you talked about the R. Now, I find this very interesting. Curious what you think about what KZ is doing here. He's actually been his, in his defensive stance for basically this whole time, being middle as Absolutely. a solo hero. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so, in the laning phase, the most important ability in your arsenal is the defensive aura. Um, level one, I'd put a, a point into W over Q almost 99.9% .9 of the time. Like, there's almost no situation in, during the laning phase in which you should not be in the defensive aura stance. Bar none. I mean, sure, you're going to get take a little loss in movement speed, but all the landing phase is is control. You know, you're trying to control the lane, and getting that extra armor on you and your allies means you're not being harassed. Uh, you're sustaining yourself in the lane. You can back up and get that health regen. So you're you're in the lane and doing what you're supposed to do, which is getting last hits, which is uh, surviving that lane. Um, so it almost the defensive war almost always allows Kane a good solid chance of coming out on top. Yeah. Now, you see right there again, kind of try, trying to make a kill happen, but unfortunately just not enough. And, and again, that, that's uh, I think that kind of brings up an interesting thing about this, uh, his ultimate here, face off. We saw him use it for the first time. By the way, it is worth noting, this is not the default avatar, of course. Uh, Keizu is actually choosing to play the 8-bit alt avatar, one of the two, of course. And and I, I've said it, and I'll keep saying it, man. I think this is one of the better avatars we've had. And I think it's the best one we've ever done. It's it's fun. It's fun from the sound to the animations to the um, effects. I mean, it was well done, man. Yeah, our sound guy said that he took more time on this here than any uh, previous Avatar hero, anything. Yeah. When he worked on this, uh, the 8 bit one. I mean, this guy has sounds forever. When he kills Jerizaya, he says, like, his own special line. Like, if you just kill Jerizaya. <laughs> I, I heard about it. He actually says, No more kings, I believe. When, right. he, when the default one at least uh, kills yep. him. So, 
Yeah, it's, and like, uh, there's like all these level up sounds. Like you level up, and it goes, ding, 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 you know. And as you change auras, it makes if you get a last hit, it does the coin thing. It's just, it's, it is, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now but all three avatars are fantastic. Obviously, yeah, and, and uh, you know, definitely gonna be tough, I'm sure, to choose which one to play. But yeah, this one definitely. If I had to choose, maybe it wouldn't be this one. But yeah, all three, of course, are good in the end. Um, now, I find this actually also curious. He actually put a, put a point into his Steel Resolve. That's his passive, of course, which obviously when he attacks somebody, then it applies the, steals, or the, the Anguish, which makes him do less damage to him. Right now, 20%, up to 50% at level 4. What do you think of that decision there early on? So, uh, I'm kind of... I'm okay with it because he, he, he did it a little later, but um, generally the E, the passive, is not something that you'll need uh, immediately in the game. It's kind of like... Uh, crit on swift blade you don't it's a late game thing it's a late game tool it's not something that you'll need right off the bat it's it's really only super strong when he has 50 percent damage reduction so um you need a lot of levels in it uh, i honestly don't think that you should be hitting e until later on in the game you really need to max out that w you really need to max out that q so um i'd almost never say going e early is the yeah. Best route, but if you're going to, you know, try to get into some team stuff, 10% damage reduction, why not? 20% there, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, again, this is, as new heroes in general, you know, you're going to want to try out a lot of different skill builds and kind of get an idea for yourself of what, what you're comfortable doing. And that's, uh, of course, uh, no different here with King the Usurper. So you see Kazu, unfortunately, drop right there, 2v1, that'll happen. Uh, but uh, he didn't max out his Wele. I don't think there's uh, any anything other different than that. You're mentioning not only is it, it it's great for initiating with keeping people close to you, but it is a very hefty damage tool yeah, on top it's of it's way too uh, versatile. I mean, it's farming, just so. you have to max it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So got that first here now. Uh, now his face off. So it's really interesting with his face off ability. His ultimate again. We've already seen him use it once. I, I think it's safe to say uh, now people, you know, when they watch a video and everything, they have their their mindset of like, oh, this is what I expect to do with it, how powerful it's going to be. Now early on, I think I think face off is definitely more of a just simply a crowd control ability. You see right here, he's going to use it. Yes, he is. So they're going to lock down Mora and, well, basically right on cue right there. So the crowd control aspect of it actually kept her close enough to get the kill. Uh, in the end, whereas when you develop throughout the game, you start getting more hard-hitting items, perhaps if that's how you choose to build, then actually that's where it's more of a, I'm going to quickly burst your down kind of ability. But for now, mm -hmm. it's still more crowd control, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you'll see a lot of times the, the best use for it is um, to, to not do it as, as so much as an initiation device, but kind of wait for somebody to get to about half-life, um, a little bit above half-life, and then use it so that your team can secure a kill with it, just because of the CC um, ability, just just to lock something down. Um, it definitely transitions later on into the game into its more counter-carrying purpose. Oh, there you go, actually using the Whaley right there again. Not, o not only for the damage and a pull in, but it does apply that slow is worth noting as well, the 20% movement slow for those four seconds. We'll see if he can maybe get out of this. Of course, that's more his illusion. It looks like uh, he is going to be fine. Oh, man, take the arrow for your teammate, Keisu. Come on. Uh, they may actually get a turn right here as uh, Cthulhu Fun and Dimension Shaman now doing their thing. So they do lose the elephant, but uh, he does have face off. I wonder if he's going to look to use it right here, maybe on the Valkyrie if she comes back in. Again, could, he is an offensive player. He's probably just right going to peace right now. Yeah. I mean, he's looking in a pretty tough situation. Deciding it's probably not best here. Okay. Oh, he's got bubbles coming in though, so we're probably gonna see face off right here. So. Yeah, he does have the mana for it. There right, you he's go. Save for another Q. There it is. Yeah, he's gonna keep more, and the crit comes out again. He's in on when he's dragging the sword behind him like that. Obviously, that means he's in his offensive stance. And in that, and now what that does to reiterate again, that gives him him and his teammates. I mean, I think when I when I first saw that ability, I thought to myself, okay, you know, it gives him the crit. Cool. It's him and his teammates. The, him and his teammates, as long as they're, in, they're in, within the R range, 40% crit damage uh, or crit chance to crit for 1.5 damage. And then as well as out of combat mana regeneration uh, coming out. So that's a pretty powerful tool to take advantage of, I think it's safe to say. And I'm pretty sure I, I, I can also see a lot of Kane players most likely using that more so than the defensive one, even though they probably should use the defensive one more, but as Kizu has kind of been doing here. But it's just so appealing to go for that crit, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah the, so. the crits, the crits. Um, gonna it, what, what's going to be really cool, or, or really decisive, or, or fun about the hero is how you play the auras in team fights and situations, and how you switch back and forth, and what you determine is going to be the best for your team. Uh, whether or not going in with that, everybody being able to crit, or going in with that extra armor. Yeah. Um, it really makes the hero uh, very versatile, and I like that. 
Now, let's talk about some item progression here. He, he obviously gets the Steam Boots. I mean, that's worth talking about, too. It boots in itself, as far as what upgrades you're looking for. You Obviously, in this case, probably that or Ghost March would be legitimate options. Even Planet Greaves, I guess, perhaps. Uh, do you like the Steam Boots option yourself? Uh, Steam Boots are going to be the go-to boots for this hero. Um, it has everything he needs. He's a strength hero. Um, he needs his stats, uh, the extra HP, and, of course, attack speed goes great with crit. So um, in your offensive form, having that extra attack speed boost will probably net you more damage than your average enhanced marchers would. Yeah. So getting that here, he actually picks up a Helm of the Victim, which I would lead to believe is uh, going to be turning into that uh, eventual Insanitarius. And that tends to be more of a popular item on the, especially the strength kind of heroes that look at a hard hit a little more effectively. So speaking of that, I mean, Insanitarius, is that your preference? Insanitarius, yeah, definitely a go-to. Um, so if I'm going to play more of a semi-carry build and try to rush a more uh, farm-centric stuff, I'll, I'll go Light Brand. But... Nine times out of ten, you're going to want to just throw on the Insanitarius and, and hit your ult on somebody. So, um, Insanitarius is definitely the go-to for me, I would say. First item after Boots, of course. Yeah, as he's doing so right here. So, that's going to be frustrating dealing with that Moria, but uh, man, it's going to go back and be fine here. Uh, uh, again, you talk about the Aura switching. Now, now with it being maxed out, earlier on, it's eight seconds that you have to wait for as far as the, the cooldown being on it, I believe. Yeah, eight second cooldown. We're at level four, it's all the way down to two seconds, so you can be a lot more willing to change it frequently right. when it comes to those fights as you, of course, get it up there. So early on, it's understandable maybe why it wasn't switching as much, but now you're going to be uh, ideally looking to, you know, pop in and out depending on the circumstance, such in the fight. Now, right here, that fight didn't go so well, and it looks like his team, unfortunately. Casey's playing a little, uh, he's not playing, the, I wouldn't say he's playing at his best right now. You're always trying to get your feel for a hero, you know, and see what kind of, you know, test the, the boundaries with hero, but, so I think that's what Casey's doing right now. <laughs> he's kind of overextending a little bit, he's getting, he's kind of all over the place, but um, he's having a good time and uh, he's not doing too bad. Uh, not too bad. Well, what is it, what are his stats actually? Two, three, and three, all right. Uh, Two, three, and three. He's rocking almost 300 GPM. He's going to have that Insanitarius pretty soon. The, the game will turn in his favor pretty quick once he has that Insanitarius. Yeah, that's the idea, at least. So, um, now, when, when it comes to the building of this hero, again, we talked about, so he's kind of that anti-carry, kind of a you know team support pusher even. What kind of item build ultimately do you like to see? Would you prefer? I mean, is there diversity when it comes to that? Uh, in the end, as far as the items are concerned. Uh, so, if you're going to play the the, the semi-carry route or the more tanky route, um, you're still, at the end of the day, an excellent pusher. So, the ability to wipe out a creep wave with your Q is fantastic, and he pushes in a different way than other push heroes, which is, uh, normally you let the creeps tank a tower, um, but with uh, Kane, you can actually ult a tower, which will have the tower attack you, and then your passive makes the tower do 50% reduced damage to you. Yeah. So you're actually going to push the tower way quicker by allowing yourself to tank rather than the creeps to tank, which is a cool new way of, of kind of pushing. Um, but as far as items go for that, I always look to kind of polish off a, a, a push build. So early in Sanitarius gets you those early kills, allows the snowball to kick in. I think a Soul's Bulwark, a Shrunken Head, Helm of the Black Legion, these are all excellent items to have you tank and, and push down towers and, and be an excellent support to your um so i'd almost always do that and then i would transition into uh the demonic breastplate and maybe dawnbringer or behemoth's heart to polish off the game um but yeah i think that when you the, out of all the test games that i've played and i've played a hundred cane games on sbt um i would say the the most efficient i've ever been has been like you know abyssal skull souls bulwark shrunken head helm of the black legion uh, and then switching into those later tanky strength items and just kind of be this more tanky pusher. Um, though a lot of people are going to attempt to do the carry stuff, and that's, you know, that's fully up to them. But he's never going to be a hard carry. He's never going to out-carry a Dark Lady or, you know, um, a, a Kronos or Sandwraith or something. He's always going to be that uh, secondary. Uh, now, I love that right there. So a couple things to note right there why he ultimately won that battle. One, you know, the face-off, putting the damage on a swift blade. Now, it was only level one uh, steel resolve at the time, but it did reduce his damage down by 20% to him. So he's able to, you know, survive through the swift slash, perhaps, because of that. But then he eventually, as, as I love seeing that, because that's exactly, at least when it comes to me, the idea of how the hero should be played. He was offensive throughout the early part of the fight, you know, looking to get the crits in there. As his life got lower, though, he was trying to play a little more defensively, and then he switched to stance. And then when swift blade went to try to finish the job, 
uh, because of the defensive stance, because of that plus five armor, as well as a little bit of region that may have kicked in uh, before Swift Blade ultimately got to him, uh, definitely proving to be a difference maker right there in the end. So, you know, Casey again, being a smart player himself, uh, knowing uh, even though he's still new to the hero like everyone else, uh, taking advantage of the skill set right there. Absolutely. So the or is always going to be like uh, Steam Boot swapping, you know, really good players or, or, you know, above average players know how to Steam Boot swap. And, and most of our community have learned how to Steam Boot swap. But it's not like, you know, a lot of pubbers will, will probably just kind of sit, stick in the crit aura and, mm -hmm. and just kind of stay in that way. If you actively switch auras with Kane, for, you know, per the situation, you'll net a lot more positive results when you play in the team. Yeah. Now, what I also found kind of interesting uh, about the uh, face-off ultimate, uh, there's a couple a couple things actually I want to bring up here. Is actually, we're going to see a, an engagement. Let's see how he does this. Goes offensive. It looks like there's a face-off. Yeah, he's going to make sure to get that kill to Swift Blade. So exactly, again, a good purpose of it right there. But uh, this actually leads into what I was just about to bring up, though. Face-off, it's honestly a pretty short cooldown. So use it willingly. Use it liberally. Yep. You know, don't be afraid to use it, basically. At level 3, hell, it's a 30-second cooldown yeah. at that point. So... We, we we wanted it to definitely be this very active uh, ability that he's constantly using. Uh, um, it puts him at just as much risk as it does um, the enemy team as far as positioning is goes. You know, you're rushing at each other. Um, so I mean, you're going to go straight into the, into the into the thick of it as well. And if teams are adequate and they know how to push and they know how to do things properly, it, you can you can almost force these team fights constantly, you know, all the time. So that's the rationale we had behind having a lower cooldown ultimate is that he's going to be causing these team fights consistently and, and increasing the action, increasing the uh, the ability to push and, and, and kind of end games. Yeah. <laughs> you see right there, keeping Valkyrie in place. And Valkyrie in place, Legionnaire right? Legionnaire doing, doing the rest in a sense with that so you, you can see so. too, it's not, it's not as an initiation tool, yeah, great. But it's really good as kind of like a follow-up. Like yeah. Valkyrie blinks and then use it. Or somebody who ha used their escape, you know, Mage Bane blinks and then you grab them with it. Yeah. Um, Mage Bane, by the way, owns Camper. Yeah, he thinks. So. Why is that? Yeah, oh yeah, dude. There was some SVT game where I was playing against Mage Bane. I could every time I ulted him, he just he just tossed him. <laughs> it's that man drink. Yeah. I mean, that, that that kind of brings up an interesting point. Uh, as far as you know, m maybe heroes that would ultimately be powerful against him. What would you say? You say, you say Mage Bane because of that mana burn, I guess. Uh, um, Mage Bane, any, anybody who can eat through that, uh, just high bursty type heroes, like a, a Berserker, um, anything that you're going to challenge, and they're just going to kind of mow you. So, um, like even a scout with a disarm, all sorts of things that can, uh, can just, you know, counter carries essentially themselves too. Just yeah. Intense. Um, Devour and Kronos are going to specifically be counters to, um, this hero because, they're the two things that can move Kane out of his uh, his showdown. Like, you know, if I drop a Kronos ult after Kane ults, then it's going to nix it. Yeah. And Devo obviously can hook whoever's being targeted by it or, or hook the Kane himself away from it. So you, those hook heroes, the Kronoses, they're gonna, they're, you're going to see those kind of definitely uh, get in Kane's way. Jeez, see right there again to use the face off aggressively and... Mm -hmm. Getting Swift Blade down about a quarter of his life from full. Giving him no Runs option to run. Yeah, using that uh, Elder Parasite of his, which just got his follow-up. And actually, oh, there you go. The follow follows it. So, uh, it, you know, I, I've, I've already seen this again. Uh, it just came out today, but I've already seen this is kind of already one of the uh, hot discussions with this hero when it comes to item progression is, what do you think of barbed armor? Because it, it seems like both good and bad. and it, Like, his ultimate makes it, it could be good, but his passive, actually, with the Steel Resolve, makes it like, is it really that good then in the end? Right. Um, th that's one of those things that you're going to just have to kind of take a gamble on. Same thing with, like, Elder Parasite. Like, he's got Elder Parasite right now, and he's he's compensating for the bonus damage he's taking by having the reduced damage of his passive, but he still is increasing the damage he takes when he always. Um, there are going to be heroes that, that are just snowballing better than you in games, and they're going to kill you in your ultimate. And things like Barb Armor actually can really turn the game around, because... Something that a carry can't control if if he's hitting for a ton of bricks and you ult him and and before you ult you turn on barbed armor, he's doing that damage to himself no matter what. He can't stop it, he can't delay it. It's almost guaranteeing the effectiveness of 
um, armed armor, whereas in any other situation, you know, you just stop attacking and wait for it to end. Now, Steel Resolve's not toggleable, right? You're like, it has to be applied. It has. You can't turn it off. So I was, I was thinking, like, if you could toggle it, then maybe that would really make it actually a very powerful tool, but not the case, not the case. So, yeah, you see again right here, he's getting some good teamwork as well, but uh, using that waylay effectively, again, not only for the damage, but keeping them close. And holy crap, I mean, this game has actually turned around completely. It the really did. It really evened up here. Point. But, I mean, come on. Look at this. Yeah. Cthulhu Font, Kane, <laughs> Legionnaire. I mean, Strong who's line, balancing man. this game, really? Seriously. Seriously. Uh, with that said, guys, obviously we do have Waza on here, and we're, we're, we're here live with you guys. So if you do want to ask any questions in chat, Waza's usually pretty open to answering uh, the best that he can. Now, of course, can't answer everything in the end. But. I'm, keeping a, I'm keeping an eye on chat, but really right now on, you know, I'm not seeing too many... Um, hardcore questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, somebody's saying barbed armor is useless, and, but I, I can attest to many games played where it has been <laughs> the opposite of that. But other than that, yeah, any questions you guys want, um, I'm more than happy to uh, to answer anything. Um, Kane's, Kane's definitely going to be, uh, I think, a niche pick, a good, solid counter carry pick. Uh, you see people picking up something hard. It's, it's always good to have somebody who can uh, focus down. Uh, and, and a lot of, and a lot of portions of the game, people will build lineups around one hero, one hero that they're going to give all the farm to, that they're going to give all the the damage to, that they're going to stack all the neutrals for this one guy. And on lineups like that, having Kane be a counter pick to uh, stop that one guy that they put all their farm into, it can be pretty devastating. See here, clean up the Ancients, actually. Again, you, he could be using Wele right here now. He's low on man, I guess. Okay, he uses it right there. And again, I was going to point out, as he does it right there, Wele is also, it's an AoE. It's a very small AoE, but it can be an AoE ability if you have a couple heroes stacked on top of each other. And also, again, for farming purposes, as he showed right there. So, uh, yeah, keeping that in mind as well when it comes to the Wele, a.k.a. his Q ability at that point. So... But yeah, I think his aura is arguably his strongest ability. I mean, in my, I mean, obviously, altogether as the concept of the hero, you know, you want everything to synergize in a sense, and that's you know, design. But um, I think the aura is really going to bring in. And I, what I hope, though, what, what I kind of found throughout a little SBT that I was witnessing was that again, and it's understandable. People like the crits. People like to play aggressive. They, I, I found several game players just sitting in the offensive stance like the whole time, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And it's like, come on, use the power of the hero. I, I, I like what Kazu has done here, though. Yeah, I mean, that. you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna sit in that. And yeah, crit does stack. Um, okay. I do. I do think that um, people like uh, this Benzo Torch guy. He says you're supposed to build Kane like this. Ghost Marchers and Sanitarius Portal Key symbol of Rage. Portal Key is actually pretty huge on this guy if you're gonna play him more like an initiation tool. So I can. I mean, I can get on board with that. Um, the ultimate is very small range, so you might find in certain lineups to kind of get past their uh, their tanky, you know, guys. Getting a port key early on to get past that and use your ult is, is pretty cool. Yeah. So I can't disagree with that guy's item build. I think that's pretty solid. I don't know about the symbol of rage and two doombringers, but portal Cree is definitely something that's worth uh, going on as well for a situation if you're going to play him uh, more of just hardcore initiation. Yeah. All right, well, that, that replay obviously coming to a finish right there. Uh, I think uh, as long as you're good too, let one just talk. We did have another replay. That we possibly wanted to jump into here again, not too long either, but uh, to, to keep the talking going, I guess, but also perhaps uh, look at what's going on and maybe pick out what uh, Keizu is possibly doing wrong. So, <laughs> or right, or right, of course. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, Kane uh, will be a, a very, it, a very cool niche picking competitive. I, I see its competitive value. Um, we'll see once the competitors get their hands on it, of course, but um. Yeah. Other than that, uh, pubbing, uh, it's, it's just the Q and the ultimate is a lot of fun. I can say that um, watching a lot of the games being played, the one thing that uh, we will be looking at is the cooldown of the ultimate um, and what that's bringing to the game. Um, and also the cooldown of the Q um, could be relatively too short. So for those of you who are thinking that Kane might be a little too strong, that is the areas that the design team is looking at. Um, for potential adjustments, but right now, of course, you know, it's a new here. We're going to wait, wait and let that see. So I wouldn't expect yeah. anything for Kane in any near future. Um, but as any new yeah. hero would definitely work. I mean, you just got to you, you got to let the masses test it before you can really determine. Right. What you know, Kane, so. and people give the SBTers a lot of crap, but, uh, you know, 
the SP tiers uh, actually bust their tail to find as many things wrong with the hero as possible. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, they we're only playing like you know a dozen games a day. And when you got when the public gets it, it, it turns from twelve games a day to twelve thousand <laughs> games a day. So you're just going to get immediately things that you never thought of. Yeah. Uh, if you want to actually, uh, so do you have the other replay loaded by chance? Loaded. Um. Yeah. What is the? What is the? Give me the number and I'll. Yeah, one sec. You know, I'll just look it up. I already have it, didn't so I don't have to download or anything. Uh, um. Yeah. Questions about Legion Commander. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, everybody's be, going to bring up. Uh, this is Legion Commander. This is Legion Commander. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Legion Commander has a very specific role in Dota, um, and it's not has nothing to do with counter carry, and it's it's really just making Legion Commander a hard carry, and a skill set that Legion Commander has is very centered around being a hard carry. Um, the where we get ideas comes from everywhere, and everywhere uh, gets it from us. Uh, I'm not going to say that I wasn't inspired by Legion Commander when uh, playing Dota 2 when I first started the design of the hero. Abs absolutely. I'm not going to try to deny that. But do, am I trying to port over Legion Commander? No. Uh, whenever I get an idea or some sort of inspiration, I try to make it our own. I try to make it uh, Hans, you know, so that there isn't um, any overlap between other games. So yeah. sure, it, it has some resemblance to Legion Commander, but plays almost 100% different. Um, and yeah, I, I would say that I got um, some of the inspiration from Legion Commander, but mostly it was the idea of having, um, I wanted to create a primary counter carry in the game, and the only thing that can really make a counter carry a counter carry is forcing someone to um, do something that they're not supposed to, so forcing a carry to attack you, for yeah. instance, which is where the ult truly came about. Um, in here, let me load up this match ID. Let me know when you're in. I'm actually already playing it, but let me know when you're in. I'll pause and then uh, you'll just have, a, have you catch up to me. So, um, actually, uh, I believe I can. Steel Resolve. It is all damage. It's not just auto attacks or things like that. It, it's it's 50% damage overall reduction. So spells, auto attacks, you know, items use whatever. Yeah. Just to be clear um, on that. Yeah. See right here, he is level six. I wonder if he's gonna look to use a fail. Oh, he's got a double Staff damage. Staff of the Master, sure. Staff of the Master, yeah, that's. Uh, I was actually gonna bring a good question about that. See people talking about. Well, what about Staff of the Master? I mean, it would be fun to. Uh, I'm sure you know when you create a new hero, that's possibly a part of the thinking too. Uh, is, uh, is there anything that you came to mind or? So when we, whenever we create a new hero, there's always the question of do we release this hero with um, a staff? And most of the time. Um, we, what we like to do is see how people play the hero in its just its normal state, um, and then assess how well the hero is doing or how, what the hero is going to do, and then from there, in a future patch, maybe bring in a staff of the master. So, um, right now, we we knew going into this that this was going to be one of those heroes that is going to be a little controversial with um, some of the stuff that he's doing, locking someone down for 4.5 seconds is huge in our game, especially on a, a, not on a skill shot, something single target. So um, we haven't put too much thought towards any Staff of the Masters. But that being said, um, you guys can always send me a notification on the forums. People don't understand how easy it is to get stuff that into the game. Um, I, I read everything. I read anything. If you send me something through forums, through an email, if you, if you make a forum post in a thread, chances are I'm going to read it. And if your idea is cool, I'm going to put it into testing. Yeah. And then if it goes through testing, it's going to go into the game. So you have a really cool idea for Staff of the Master. Don't hesitate to hit up any of the designers and just because we're always listening and reading. And if it's cool, you know, we're not just going to ignore it. We're going to put it in. We're going to put it in and test it. I will take full credit for your awesome idea. Um, but sure, dude, get, get your stuff in the game. Makes crit chance 100%. Get a master. 100% crit? While, while in face off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, while in, yeah, while in face off. That could be interesting. <laughs> That's completely randomly thrown oh, out I, there. I like there you it. go. Put it in testing. You like it. <laughs> That's the thing. We, we, play plenty, we play plenty of SBT. We test just about anything that makes sense. Yeah. So as long as it's not completely retarded. <laughs> we will um, we'll be watching. What time do you want me to go into? Okay, so let me actually pause it right here. I'm actually I'm at 11:41 on the replay counter. Maybe they'll like it. I'm going there, and then uh, 
We'll sync up here. This brings back the old school man on Honcast. We yeah, right? used to do replay cast a long time ago. Before. Dude, this is a short replay, man. It's a shorter replay, yeah. He had a couple of shorter games here. Again, we didn't want to go too long, obviously. All right, Dragon. so 11 what? 11.41. Uh, okay, 11.41. All right, pause to that. So. All right, I'm good. All right, three, two, one, go. Go. Boom. Uh, okay, so and, and something uh, we, we did kind of see him do it uh, it happened about a minute ago or so when he actually he went for a kill on uh, I guess it was Dampier. Yeah, Dampier was middle with him 1v1 mid again uh, He went for a kill on Dampier and actually when going for, trying to commit for it, he used the face off now He was in defensive stance that whole time. You know, we we're talking about last game out defensive especially the laning phase very very powerful tool now if he was offensive a Craig could have popped up once or twice, and he'll possibly finish him off because Dampier got away with something like 100 life. Uh, of course, it, as I said earlier, though, at that point it was still level one of the ability. So you're looking at an eight-second cooldown uh, to be able to, you know, go go to decide if that really is the best decision. Now, with that said, he could have switched over, and you know, it could have worked out. But you know, that's where again the stance kind of comes into play. As far as, you know, planning ahead, I guess, is really the important thing to think about with that. Right. I would say in the rare situations that someone's going to get away where a crit would have gotten a kill is so um, inconsistent that going with consistency will always net you better results. So always making sure that you have that extra armor in the landing phase will, will always be a better situation than the happenstance where you might get a crit win. And look at that. And look at that. Look at that. Perfect, perfect reason why he was in def defense. No! Oh, and I spoke too soon. <laughs> it was lining up so perfect. Pharaoh snot that was, man. That was pretty yeah. solid. That was well played by Pharaoh, actually. Sorry, I'm sniping um, him out, so. But yeah. That was close. But, uh, again, something else to keep in mind. I see people talking about also kind of, it's understandable. People have immediate reactions to reading a text uh, as far as a hero description or, you know, seeing it, you know, a couple times. Like, oh, my God, that's so powerful. Uh, the Steel Resolve, 50% damage reduction. Yeah, it's a powerful tool. It's meant to be, you know, synergized with the face out. But I think the biggest thing to keep in mind, for one, it only lasts 1.5 seconds on them. And two, Kane has to actually be attacking that hero. So, like, in that case, it's not like Pharaoh's Rocket did 50% less damage. He, it was nowhere close to him, nor was he even remotely attacking him. So the idea that he's just taking that much less damage as he's, say, trying to run away is not really realistic unless he's constantly turning around hitting them once and then continuing to run. So The, the power of the ability is, is really strong. The 50% is, is huge, right? Yeah. But it's only really effective in one versus one situations where they're, they're attacking you and you're attacking them. So that's only really going to happen in your ultimate. And it's only going to really happen when you're on a tower, because the tower is obviously, you, can, you know what a tower is going to do. Um, but for the most of, most portions of the game, 90% of the game, that passive is going to be doing nothing for you. Um, and whenever you have an ability where 90% of the game is doing nothing, then it it can warrant that kind of strength when it does do something. Yeah. Which, um, which is its purpose. This is supposed to be a hero where I want people, when they're sitting at the pick screen, and they're like, shit, man, they just picked that carry. I want them to know that Kane is the counter carry go-to pick and haunt. Yeah. Um, and that's what that steel resolve is saying. I am fantastic for counter carry, but I'm pretty shit in, in everything else. <laughs> Counter carry is important. And speaking of counter carry right here, he's going to lock down Dark Lady and ultimately get the kill on her and actually make it Glacius here, too. Using yeah. that whale like again and blind a little bit of a slow. Oh, thanks. For, hey, yes. thank you, yep. TP. Don't you love that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's like they're here to help, so it's ultimately a good idea, sure, but I just won't take any damage in the process. Well, the competitors, the competitors wanted uh, something to counter the, the TP, and this is what they did. <laughs> That's what they got. That's what they got. Uh, again, another big thing uh, to note uh, about the aura, as I see more people talking about that, the balance of power is a technical name for it, but, you know, of course, defensive might and offensive something. I forget exactly what it's called. Anyways, uh, point being that uh, it is a – the regen on it is out of combat regen. So, yes, 12 health regen in defensive stance is powerful. Yes, 4 mana per second regen is also – very powerful, but it is out of combat. So, you know, similar to Striders, of course, how that kind of kicks in as eventually you get out of a fight and whatnot. So it's it's for that purpose. I, th I think you could probably explain this better, but, you know, for the purpose of after a fight takes place, you know, things are resetting, but to keep your team going forward, say, rather than having to fall back and ultimately go back to base. 
and throw on the regen right. from there. So. so one of the things when we were designing this hero, we were looking at um, a lot of team fights will happen, and then after a team fight happens, your team can't really take advantage of your victory because you're all so low on life or you're all so low on mana um, that by the time you push, the enemy team's back up and you're at a disadvantage. So this is where Kane's team presence or team focus comes in, is these regens. Um, you start to push, Kane, you know, has the tower focusing him, yeah. your whole team is regening a lot of HP or a lot of mana, so when the other team comes back, you're not at such a disadvantage going into it. So it allows you to take advantage of one team fights um, by switching to the aura, which is why it has that stipulation that you have to be out of combat for eight seconds, because um, if it was anything but that, it would be pretty strong. Yeah. Um, but the eight seconds is there to stipulate that not much is going on around you when it kicks in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, uh, we haven't seen Casey do it yet, and I don't know if we're going to ultimately, but uh, I, I could see the purpose of it being, I'm getting a face-off, the idea that you could target towers with it, and, you know, again, I definitely get the idea and everything, but do you expect that uh, to be actively used, or is that more of kind of a niche thing, like maybe in push lineups, or just uh, when appropriate? So is ultimate how you can target towers with it, the face-off? What was, what was, I guess, more so, what was the intention of adding that in? Like, you could have just easily said, okay, it doesn't work on towers. Why put that in? Um, right, so uh, there's a lot of uh, base breaking concerns in Han uh, at the higher levels of TMM. Uh, a lot of heroes that uh, don't have the power to get into the bases or crush, uh, the, the just having problems just getting rid of the buildings. Yeah. So. Um, games sometimes are extended in length way past what they should be because there isn't a lot of uh, choices for base breaking. So um, this was just kind of added in as a flavor thing um, to add to his ability to base break. And uh, we thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool to, to be able to push in a different way or wouldn't it be cool to have this guy interact in a completely different way than any other hero, which is you actually want the tower to be attacking you. So... Um, uh, it, it, w it was added as like a, a more later on thing um, mm -hmm. than it was originally, but um, we played around with a lot of stuff with it, which was having other, you know, creeps in the lane attack the target with you and uh, do all sorts of stuff. But in the end, it, it was just uh, a different way of adding pushing it and an another hero capable of helping out the base break problem. Yeah. Definitely uh, can bring that presence. Now, I kind of found a curious Casey's decision here. Uh, going the portal queue route, do you, do you ever think that that would make sense to you? I mean, it does give that obviously the extra initiation purpose. Is kind of using it right here, even as I say that, right. trying to kill Dark Lady. I don't know if he's well, so he, he did it right now, right here, and that I mean that was fantastic for initiation. And dude, he almost he almost killed the guy, but now he's at no mana. He doesn't have any damage to really kill the Dark Lady. So, in the end, his choice to solo initiate on the guy probably wasn't the smartest, but. Um, if he had a team with him right there, they would have just crushed, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to play Kane as this more hardcore initiator, sure, that is the exact route to go. I, would, I have no complaints about it. But if you're trying to, like, solo kill the Dark Lady, Steam Boots and Portal Key is not going to do the job, Casey. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying it out here. Oh, that was kind of interesting, actually. The freeze. He casted it, but the freeze kept him in place initially. Yeah. And now Cuts he's a little uh, bit of time off of it. Off of the, um has a little bit of the time off. That's one of the downsides to the ability is that um, you know you're not completely immune, so um, there are things that can mitigate it and mitigate the time. Yeah, that's uh, you were talking about earlier. You know things like Devo, especially as the ability to pull them away. What about Tablet of Command? I mean, is that anything awkward with that as far as using the ultimate? Um, currently, it, it it all works to an extent. Well, uh, well, what I mean to an extent is that it works 100%. But okay. <laughs> when I say to an extent is that we are actively looking on uh, possibly removing that interaction from it. Um, keeping things like Devour and other heroes being able to counter it. But um, things like Push Stick might be a little overboard. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be looking at it. We're going to be seeing how effective it's used as a counter uh, strategy. But um, right now, I don't see too many concerns that it, you know, it might drop a second or two off of the, the ultimate, but all in all, it's probably not going to be a big deal. Yeah, We'll look at it, though. And well, if it's making... Um, Kane is his ultimate. If he doesn't have the ultimate, he's really just... He loses his, his almost his entire job. So we'll make sure that the ultimate can remain effective and that there is still valid counterplay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you talk about the tab, but you know, there have been certain heroes, such as Pandemonium comes to mind. Of course, Devour, speaking of him. 
where, you know, that ultimate was taking away that capability for the purpose of, you know, preventing it from being possibly a too powerful item. So it sounds like you're going to keep an eye on that, see how it ultimately does affect him, and maybe make changes from there for the time being. So, or in the near future, but... For now, as you pointed out, it does work, so keeping that in mind. It does, yeah. Use it and and, and abuse it. And <laughs> there you go. If you abuse it too much, we'll fix it. But, uh, that's how it all works. That's how it works. It comes together. Uh, isn't Candy ultimate berserker counter? I don't know exactly if that's be the case. Mm, okay, so uh, I, there there's a few games where we specifically tested berserker against um, Kane. And I think right now in SBT, Berserker is like 100% win rate on Kane. Okay. You can reduce. It. I mean, most people, you're not maxing it. Like, even right now, they're, they're level, he's level 13. He hasn't maxed his pass. He's still not at that, that minus. That was awesome. That minus. Um, so, for, the, for a good portion of the game, for the first half of the game, you're not getting that 50% reduction. Yeah. A Berserker's going to mow through you. I mean, even with the damage reduction, he's just going to know you. Um, and that happens more often than not. So I wouldn't say he's an ultimate counter to Berserker. I would say Berserker is more or less a counter to him because he's one of those high burst um, damage heroes. They, they're pumping out a lot of damage up front. Um, and that just kind of um, really can wreck a cane, especially if he hasn't build appropriately. Now, what, uh, well, actually, that kind of brings up an interesting thing with Berserker specifically. His ultimate out reduces duration and stuff of stuns and whatnot. Does that work against his uh, against face off, or is that absolutely okay? So yeah, that yeah. makes face off even very yep. less uh, powerful against him. So, yeah, yeah. An interesting side thing there, but but um, yeah, no, it, it's definitely it, uh, there's a there's a lot of turns too where you'll get a Berserker before he gets he turns on his ultimate. You hit him with the ult and. Um, yeah. And you know you get him to a good low amount of life, and then he just activates his ultimate afterwards and just crushes. Yeah. But um, yeah. And that's another thing you brought up earlier. The debuff is only 1.5 seconds. So yeah. if there's any, if you CC Kane in any way, shape, or form, that debuff falls off, and you're just killing him. <laughs> I know you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but once again, bringing it up, the competitive value of this hero. I mean. When when you first when you when you are designing a hero, is that is that a, a big part that comes to mind? Or is that kind of one of the smaller things that comes to mind? So regardless of what everybody wants to believe, we we always design a trickle down theory of um, if it's good for competitors, then the lower level players will want to uh, get to that level. So eventually they'll learn how to do it right. So if the competitors are doing it right, eventually the the public will. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we always keep in mind uh, the viability that this will have competitively, um, but it's not the end all to be all. The the we have certain design philosophies of making the hero have very high highs and, and and having very good impactful moments and having a unique niche in the game and just you know hitting all those uh, separate goals are, are almost always more import, important in hero design uh, that you hit those first and then you look at the potential for competitive viability but there hasn't been a single here that we haven't released that we haven't looked at how good is this going to be competitively how good is it in tmm and how good is it going to be in the competitive scene yeah i'm sorry grims we don't really consider you but everything uh, everything else <laughs> Yeah, I, I personally think Kane, at least where he's at right now, I know as usual with the new hero, you know, maybe go through a couple of changes here there's when it comes to balance, but eventually when it becomes tournament rules eligible, uh, I, I could see it being a fun one to uh, to work with. So. Oh, absolutely. It's it's going to see its days. Um, generally, if you're going to pick a, a lineup that's going to be solely focused on um, putting all your farm on one guy, <laughs> oh, wow. the time, that's this Tivo. <laughs> and, oh, Kane is getting upset. Oh, uh -oh. maybe not. Um, but no, it, it's going to be this this niche pick that you pick to counter uh, heroes that are teams that are putting all their focus into one thing, or teams that know that they're going to do that will probably just ban it. Yeah. Now, but, that uh, was a uh, nice save right there. But yeah, again, you do see KZ in the defensive stance. Of, you know, when going into a fight again, the idea that if they jump you, uh, you are already, you're getting a f five armor buff, if anything, is a, is a pretty big deal. So. Yeah. He's going in right here. We'll see if he actually switches stances as he goes in. No, no, definitely not now. <laughs> He's going to be caught on it. <laughs> Before a team fight, dude, this Devo knows, yeah. has a homing hook <laughs> on Keizu. But yeah, no, when you're going to be, you're going to be. 
It's hard. It's gonna be hard to say. I, I would love to see how he turns out competitively. Um. But um, yeah. In the end of the day, he is just going to be. He's not gonna be one of those have to picks. Yeah. Oh, his teammates. We'll see. Uh, see how it goes. Unfortunately, falling apart right here. So. Uh, but yeah, I was also gonna say. I mean, honestly, this hero too. I, I know you know with the new hero in general, it's it's, it's understandable to be kind of excited and whatnot. But th this really does feel like my kind of hero too. So I, I'm extra excited for good old uh, Kane to be coming out. Yeah, we've we've been doing a lot of um, I well, I've been doing a lot of strength melee auto attackers. So the the team's kind of been teasing me a bit about making more strength melee guys. But you know, this one. I uh, just felt like it was right. I know that some people complain that this hero doesn't fit the right meta because right now, um, you know, the meta isn't isn't solely focusing farm on one individual. Yeah. Um, which is true. It's not. But um, I do see with the buff to two carries that we've done recently that that might be something that we see in the future. So, um, I think that though it might not fit the meta now, maybe in a couple months we might see that change. Yeah. A couple more cycles. And Hauntor, and we might see change. All right. Uh, he does build the Insanitarius against a uh, went with that Porta Key first, kind of trying something new again. Always uh, n nothing wrong with that, obviously. Yeah, I mean, if you're going, if you're going to play him like a Behe or like a Magnus, and I'm sorry if you guys are hearing the massive train <laughs> that Just always comes by the office. Just a um, little. Yeah, and this guy, he loves to just spam the like. He wants to let really everyone know it. he's there. <laughs> I know exactly that's what train. <laughs> yep, that's the train. But, um... A lockdown engineer here? Yeah. He, so he, I mean, he's playing it. I mean, that like, that's the pickoff. That's the play. You blink in on something that can't survive your face off. You just go down. Um, he's all... This team is just kind of awesome. Not, yeah. They don't really understand how to play against Kane. I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna assume that his win rate is going to be solid for the next week or two, but after that, people are going to get a pretty good idea what to do with Yeah. Now, again, the balance of power, it is also going to be an interesting ability. It's, we saw him kind of transition a couple of times throughout that fight. I mean, even when his team was coming out on top, he actually went to the defensive uh, to help finish them off, you know, giving the armor just in case. But uh, now remember, obviously, that does take away the crit damage from your team, from you and your team, at least the chance to crit. Uh, so I guess that that's where it's also that's where kind of the team makeup comes into play, doesn't it? Like, say if you have, like, a hard-hitting, like, a flint beast that's crazy farmed, you probably want to be offensive even going into fights just in case at the – so at the beginning of it, he has a chance to start critting right off the bat, you know, things like right. that, I guess. So, right. team composition, paying attention to who's on your team and what role you're ultimately playing is very yep, important. it's going to be huge. Uh, I mean, generally, if you've won a team fight too, or, or like you're winning a team fight, making that transition from defensive to offensive, so that you have the extra move speed yourself, and you're you're giving your team crit to just kind of clean things up as quickly as possible. We've all played TMM games where you've almost killed a guy, and in your brain you're just like, screw it, I'm I'm chasing this guy to his side of the map until I kill him. Like I'm just doing it, yeah. and then you do that, and then you die. Um, switching to offensive or to to maybe hunt those guys down a better. Room. It's probably the best route to go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, right now he's he's hardcore on the offense. He forgot to use his sanitarius. <laughs> no, maybe yeah. not. Just save it for later. But he he use right that time. He's gonna be fine. Yeah, he's just saying. Uh, oh, we're, we're soon gonna say goodbye to that noxious cloud. Get ready. That's gone. Oh yeah, you're talking it's about that. It's That's leaving the earth. Monarch no longer gonna be the true monarch. And I'm gonna hear so many people complain about why'd you get rid of noxious cloud? It's like totally the best thing on. Monarch, like, what are you thinking? And they're going to be the same people that complained about Monarch being just like Glacius. <laughs> yeah, but, um, it's no, tough that's life. off, off topic. Off, I'm, uh, as you can tell, I'm bitter about Monarch. No, no, I'm excited <laughs> for the caterpillars. The caterpillars are coming. Be entering in the world of New Earth. For those that don't know what we're referring to, uh, if you missed the last podcast, check it out the Honkast podcast uh, later on in the podcast. Uh, the very near the very end, in fact, we actually had Wasla come on. And, he may have leaked a couple things here and there as yep. far as uh, what's going to be coming up. So, Speaking of that, I mean, hey, you're, you're, you're happy to be on here, a live stream and all. Yeah. I mean, it's always saying it's just, just always, me and you. Uh, no one's tuning in. No. What, what, what have we got going on? I'm definitely one of the, the few S2 members that just loves leaking everything that we're doing. So I do have to be a little careful. Otherwise, I'll tell everybody the patch. Um, everything. 
But yeah, I mean, you made a strong point that I guess support is going to be a big factor in this coming balance yeah. match, especially. Uh, Monarch, of course, one of those supports among several. Right. We are trying. We were trying to... Uh, Monarch and Glacius have overlapped for far too long. Um, we've decided to make Monarch a more defensive support um, with a niche of, of being a more defensive role uh, and having Glacius maintain that kill combo offensive support. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we'll be seeing a rework to Monarch. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, items. We're seeing lower costs on support-centered items. Um, we're seeing a lot of support heroes all getting uh, buffs and tweaks and changes. And so it should be a good uh, patch day for those who play supports as their primaries. Yeah. And that, uh, that, I believe, is safe to say. And that's my, my, my role I usually like to play overall as well. And, and actually, kind of speaking of that, that... Uh, uh, on Facebook, the heroes are new with Facebook, actually. A post just went out, I believe, within the last hour or so. Uh, basically, uh, a quiz that yeah, you, you guys yourself can also take. If you go to the heroes are new with Facebook, uh, you can actually take the quiz. And ultimately, it's, it's only 10 questions, you know, pretty short and simple. Um, it, it'll help let you know maybe what role you probably fit best in terms of uh, how you answer the questions and everything. So. There's Steve-O. There you go. Hey, have you taken the quiz yet? No, I have not. I'm uh, listening to it right now, though. <laughs> Gotta see what kind of player you are. Uh, oh, I yeah. I know what kind of player I am. <laughs> the troll. Okay. I think it's, that might be one of the options. Just it's the called troll. the best. That's it's gonna say your role is the best <laughs> player. What kind no. of player are you? The best. No, you're not even the best in the office. So. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> not I'm not. not. All right, so that's gonna do it for that game as well, and uh, I think that'll be that'll be good for. Yeah. For the good old Kane here. Um. You know, the, the hero is um, has a lot of versatility and is still simple, simple at the same time. So a lot of people who are like wanting a simple hero, he can be played simple. He also has a lot of nuances for those who like a more uh, in-depth uh, play style. I think he's going to fit a lot of people's, um, the way that they like to play. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy him. Um, and of course, like always, we'll keep a close eye on how the hero performs. Yeah. As always, as always. So... Uh, I'm showing you guys right here, okay, just a quick overview of the abilities. Again, if you go to heroesandearth.com, in fact, uh, the splash page that is up, it not only breaks down the abilities like we have here, but it also gives you a short little video clip, you know, an idea of what we're looking at there. Um, and again, remember also, the not, this is the default avatar, so we haven't watched uh, uh, Casey play on the 8-bit avatar, both those games. Of course, it's the default, and then this is the Katana avatar as well, another fun one. Yep. And, uh, you the Katana the is, is, is my favorite. But I still can't play them because the sounds on the 8 bit are just, <laughs> just too good. Amazing. What I really like what they did, though, I mean, uh, the ultimate animation, they could have just easily you know, made it very, the same across the board, but no, they're like, they made a point. We got to make the ultimate animation unique to each hero as well. And the the yin yang sign that spins in a circle and stops yeah. on each one. Oh, man. It's fantastic. It's over. It's, it's a lot, to be fair, but yes. That, that's what, it's abilities like that that I just absolutely love. So it's definitely going to prove to be another iconic ability, I'm sure, uh, within the game. So, all right. So Kane the Usurper, uh, we got uh, we got coming out here, of course. Uh, again, it came out today, a day earlier than usual, in fact. Again, being a Tuesday here, uh, a great day of October 21st. So you, you. Uh, with that said, I think that should pretty much uh, have things come to a conclusion here. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Waza, before we officially wrap up? Um, I will say that, um, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoy the hero. Make sure that if you have any constructive um, feedback, you can always message me on the forums. I read every notification that comes through. Um, so you can always get in touch with me. I'm not detached from the community in any way, shape, or form. None of us are. We really like to be involved. So um, if you have any concerns or you want to just talk on because I can talk on forever just uh, just send me a message and that and that we do have a balance patch coming soon uh, it is focused on it I, I we're, we're rounding about uh, 50 plus changes right now um, we're looking at a few reworks uh, things are looking pretty cool for that patch and that's going to be coming out uh, pretty soon so keep your eyes on the prize Definitely, definitely should. Sure. Guys, uh, get excited once again. Candy Usurper is officially out. Definitely check it out in Heroes of New Earth. And uh, I know I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to play it, but uh, get those games in and play some good old Candy Usurper. As you saw, it's all right there. Shout out to Casey as well for I mean, he didn't do yeah. anything other than just simply play. Then we happened to get his replays. But uh, shout out to Casey for at least uh, playing the hero and playing it well enough. Uh, 
Hey, I, we were thinking of whether we we're going to have like one of us play it, or let, let's just grab somebody that's actually pretty good at the game and do it. And I think that was Dude, this option. Facebook site is actually <laughs> the questions they ask. I know it's pretty, hilarious. pretty, pretty funny actually. Legacy so. player seven twenty IRL easy. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, definitely check that out, guys. Facebook.com slash Heroes of New Earth, and uh, that's the uh, quiz we got up there to help let you know what role you may be playing. So. All right, guys. Uh, with that said, as far as uh, what we're doing here, we're going to be wrapping this up. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you didn't miss any of it, we'll get it on the uh, YouTubes as soon as possible as well. So, of course, it'll be here on the Twitch VOD, uh, here on the Honcast channel. As far as Honcast is concerned, guys, again, we're going to be coming back this weekend. Cycle 4 coming at you. Uh, continuing coverage. The top four teams. Not only do we have our loser's bracket matchup of Night Raid versus uh, Dawn there, which is definitely a little surprising for both of those teams even. Uh, to be there, but Nairi versus Don and loser bracket, but then of course the winner bracket finals of State or pff, not State Green, <laughs> Sync Esports versus Bad Monkey Gaming is going to be there. So those are the four teams remaining, and it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. So again, that all kicks off on Saturday. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. Uh, we'll be seeing you next time here on Honcast. Also, shameless plug: check me out on on Thursday and Friday. I got my personal stream going on. I'm going to be playing plenty of Kane. You can guarantee Easy. both of those days. Uh, maybe some old Kane mid wars. I'm sure. Even going to be coming at you. That's that's going to be chaotic.